This is Gordon Telepin, and my YouTube channel is dedicated to educating people about total solar eclipses. But I needed to do a video about the Titan disaster. I made this quick video a year ago after the Titan disaster, but the Coast Guard hearings regarding the disaster are going on right now in Maryland, and all of the fears we had about Stockton Rush and the poor engineering are coming true. I think one of the most frightening things about the Titan disaster is the fact that this sub was basically glued together. This is an official OceanGate video of gluing the titanium to the carbon fiber hole. Let's break down some of these images and talk about it. Today is a critical uh, joining of the titanium and the carbon fiber. That seal needs to be uniform and small, but not too small. So that's an interesting line delivered in an odd inflection saying that the glue has to be uniform and small but not too small. But there must be some data behind that, some engineering strength data. Is it a millimeter? Is it two millimeters? And what if it's not uniform? When we watch more of this video, you'll see that there's no way to know whether or not it's uniform or not between the two components, um, really what's holding them together and allowing them to move together is the glue. At this point in the development of this sub, it was unclear whether or not the glue would allow these two different type of materials to move together as he just stated. The glue is very thick, so it's not like Elmer's glue, it's like uh, peanut butter. Now look at the precision of this. They're basically wiping this peanut butter thickness glue on with plastic spatulas. This is the shot that's fascinating. I'm going to get a still photo of this and break this down. And although Stockton Rush indicated that this had to be a precise fit, it doesn't seem like the glue is applied evenly. That seal needs to be uniform and small, but not too small. Level. So this is the cap on the titanium ends that contains the glue bond. This is the point of no return right here. Yeah. I'm good already north-south, I'm east to west. So that just does not seem too precise to me. How do they know that there's a 100% uh, bond with no air gaps in that entire rim of hand-applied glue? The dimension for the carbon fiber hole is 56 inches inside and therefore about 66 inches outside, so averaging about 5 feet in diameter. So basically, there's a circumference of 16 feet on the end of the carbon fiber hole that is glued to the titanium rim. And this is only on one side. So this sub has 32 feet of glued joints. This is a cross-sectional diagram of that glued joint. And it is difficult to know whether or not the bonding surface was equal with no gaps. And this joint was subjected to over a dozen dives, taking it from sea level to a depth where it had to tolerate 6,000 PSI. Stockton Rush was warned about the dangers of having these two different types of material being glued together and subjected to multiple cycles of those forces. But he ignored the warnings. And as he said in previous interviews, yes, he's broken some rules. Oh yes, so that will be the pressure vessel for Cyclops 2. It'll go to 4,000 meters, it'll be the deepest diving carbon fiber sub ever built. When it goes to 4,000 meters, it'll be the only one out there. I'm going to be the first guy in the sub, so we will see. So I don't know about you, but I would never trust going down to those depths in the sub built with this construction. And I'm not sure his guests fully understood how this sub was made. 